Hi guys, thanks very much for joining me for this week's river tutorial. It's a small emerging pattern and um, I've just had a little play with the body, something a little bit different. I hope you enjoy it. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vice then is a Hanak H333 barbless hook. It's in black nickel and it's on a fine wire. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivus GSP. It's at 50 denier and it's G02 if you're interested, just a clear white thread. Um, first thing I'm going to do is add a tiny little bit of super glue to the shank of the hook. And I'm going to use my thread just to spread that. Then I'm going to get a bit of thread down. And I'm going to run my thread right back around the bend. And then I can snip away my waist. And then quickly bring my thread all the way back up to the top. Okay, the first thing we've got to do is put a rib on. And uh, the reason I brought my thread up to the top is because I'm going to use a, a strand of this. It's just flexi floss. I've already got a strand off here and I want to capture that in at the top and the reason for capturing it in at the top, missed it there, <laughs> uh, got it that time, I'll just make sure that's in and clamp down. If, if you clamp it in at the top you can then really stretch it out, I mean, yeah, I mean you can't stretch it to the point of breaking but you can really get it quite flat if you put a lot of pressure on it. Try and keep it on the, the top of the shank of the hook. You don't want it slipping all over the place. If you keep it on the top, it just keeps the body nice and even. So bring that down, like so, to the bottom of the fly. So that's uh, got the flexi floss attached and I'll just put it out the way there. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of flash. Now, what I wanted to do with this and show you was, um, I'm gonna use this stuff, it's it's from Hens, it's body material, and I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but it's like a matte pink finish. I wanted to show you the red, but I can't find it, so you're gonna to have to settle for pink. I'll, uh, I'll take a bit of that off. It does come out quite nice actually, but I prefer to tie it with red. I just can't find my spool of it at the moment. So I'm going to capture the pink in just at the bottom here with a couple of turns. Now it's very thin material, so it takes a little bit of effort. I'm just going to adjust my hook in the vise now. Uh, if, if something's not sitting right for you, don't be afraid to move your hook so that you can get better access to it. Just makes your life a bit simpler instead of trying to toil away working around something that um, is causing you problems. So make sure you get complete coverage. If you've got to go over it a couple of times with this stuff, don't worry. It's very, very thin. You won't be bulking up the butt end. And what you want here is just over a quarter of an inch. Just taking my time, make sure I get complete coverage. Then once I'm happy that I've got the amount I need, I can bring my thread over just to lock that in place. Okay, so that's going okay. Now I can just adjust the hook again, because I'm now going to start moving further up the shank. Make sure you've got this clamped down in your vise because uh, when we start bringing the flexi floss rib up uh, we're going to put quite a considerable amount of side strain on the hook and if you haven't clamped it in properly it'll end up pinging from the vise or the hook will move and you don't want that. Next I'm going to add my secondary body material and today I'm going to use the Vivas P01. It's a medium pearl tinsel. I've already got a little bit off here that I was working with earlier. So I'll just grab that 
and I'm going to capture that in just a couple of millimetres of it just in where I've finished off my thread and now I'm going to just using my my silk create a very very small taper it doesn't need to be much because the definition for this fly will come from the flexi floss rib so happy enough with that and I'm now going to bring up my pearl lurex the first turn needs to be quite tight if it's sticking out like mine is don't know how well you can see I'm just using my thumbnail in my left hand there to force that to sit how I want it remember you're in charge of the fly not the other way around if, if stuff isn't sitting right make it so don't be afraid to get your nail in or, or a tool if required to make material sit properly for you and that's starting to behave a lot better I'm going to bring that up now because I'm using the Vivas thread and it's white I'm getting the effect I want from the body here and when this fly sits on the water you just get a little glimpse of a, a, of light which, which imparts a little bit of life into the fly so I brought that all the way up I'm going to trap it in a couple of tons of thread then just to make sure it's in place I'm going to come in front, a couple of wraps, then snip away my waist. There we go, that's looking quite good so far, I'm fairly pleased with that, no disasters. Now, as I said, I'm just going to make sure that I've clamped the hook in properly, and I've got my flexi floss. Now, this takes a bit of practice. What you've got to do is get quite a lot of pressure on the floss initially because you want the rib to be very thin at the bottom so I get a couple of turns probably at the maximum stretch of the flexi floss then the next turn I'm going to ease up on it slightly and every subsequent turn I'm just taking the pressure off my flexi floss and I don't know how well you can see it on the camera because it is quite a small fly but it's, the ribs actually getting bigger because I'm releasing the strain on the flexi floss and by the time I get up to the top I'll probably not have any strain on the rib at all and it'll be a big old fat piece of flexi floss now you'll see it a lot better in the photograph I would think than you can on the video but what I've done there is with the flexi floss I've created quite a nice taper to my body uh, I, I, I do hope it has come up on the video because it's, it's a really good effect and I wouldn't like it to be lost I've just bent my flexi floss back and I'm removing my rag end so there we go I've, I've done that I'll just get a couple of turns in and then I can open up the vise and show you what it looks like underneath that's all looking not too bad okay so far so good next then I'm going to UV the resin the body and this just completes the look just release your vice if you need more resin don't be afraid to dip back into your bottle always prefer to be on the, the tight side with resin initially and then if I need more I go back to it it's much easier adding it in small amounts than it is um, trying to scrape it off with a needle afterwards when you've you've lagged too much on so just work that round the body of the fly Patience is the key with the we're, we're making these resin bodies. Just get it how you want it. 
then a few turns just make sure you get an even coat there if you've got any on the point of your hook just make sure you remove that because once it's cured it can be a bit of a pain to get off so I'm just coming in with my UV torch now and curing curing the fly off and this is a technique I've used on uh, lock style buzzers actually and you get a great effect with it so I just thought I'd, I'd try a few uh, emerging sedges with this kind of body it just uh, something a little bit different okay so I'm fairly happy with that next what I'm going to do is add my underwing and what I'm going to be using today is from Troutline and as you can see it's a brown dyed CDC feather there's the label I've already taken um, three plumes out the, out the pack and I've aligned the tips more or less that one seems to have slipped as I've picked it up so I've lined up the tips I'm going to bring everything back and I don't want it to protrude much past the bend of the hook here so I've married that up and as it is I've just picked it up just right just about I think so I'm going to come in with my snips and remove my rag end now I won't throw them away them rag ends they'll be retrieved and they'll go back in the packet because they can be used for other things there's no point in uh, wasting materials right so there's the underwing on and that's sitting sitting quite nice now the next thing I'm going to do is invert my vise because I have that facility if you don't have the facility to invert your vise just turn the hook round it's no problem so there's the uh, the vise is inverted now and what I'm going to do is I've got a, just a partridge feather here that I've been using I've stripped off all the waste and I've already used um, several bits of it and what I'm going to use the partridge feather for is to give the impression of some legs so basically I'll take off about a dozen partridge feathers uh, sorry fibers from the from the feather and I'm going to bring that in and it's not quite going to reach the bend of the hook once you've got it in position hold on to it with your left hand then you can clamp down the remainder now lift your waist back out the way and get your thread in front of them feathers because there is nothing worse than getting to this stage of a fly and cutting your thread away I can then come in with my snips and safely remove the waste now I did a, a little review on these scissors a while back but this is the kind of reason it's so important to have good snips um, just so you can trim away stuff like that close in without causing any damage to the fly so bring your vise back round the correct way and that profile is looking pretty good so far okay next we're going to prepare our deer hair over wing now I've already taken a small uh, amount of deer hair from my patch here and I've put it into my stacker and banged it on the table uh, I haven't done it on the camera because it does move the vise and the fly and everything and I don't want to do that so let's hope the stacking's gone okay there we go now when you first um, remove your stacker you'll see some broken ends in there now I never bother with them initially so what I'm going to do is take my deer hair out uh, sorry and then when I initially change hands so I'm moving from my left to right I just keep a little pressure on my thumb and forefinger in my left hand and, and it removes any broken ends that's come out with the stacker so that's uh, that's done the job now next so I'm just going to adjust my, my grip there 
I'm going to show up to the hook and I want it to just come slightly beyond my underwing. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to just trim my deer hair off camera here. Then I'm going to bring my thread back. So I'm now approximately an eighth of an inch from the eye. And I'm going to bring in my deer hair just on the edge of the eye there. So if I stop for a second, there's the edge of my deer hair. And I've got it right up to the eye here. And then I'm going to bring over a pinching loop initially. And then once it's in place, I can get two or three turns onto that. Then I'm going to bring my hook, sorry, I'm going to bring my thread forward of the deer hair and bring it towards the eye. Now, at this point, I'm just going to stop and have a look at my progress. Yeah, it's just spun round to your side slightly. I'm not too happy with that. I'm going to see if I can just adjust it a little bit with my fingers. And then I'm going to build a head at the front here. Now, before I build my head, I don't want it to be white. I'm just going to give it a little colour up with a Pro Marker. You can use black for this, but uh, I just happen to have the, the green one on my bench. So I've coloured up my, my uh, Vivas thread and I'm just going to come round and build a little bit of a head there. Then once that's done I can come over with my whip finish like so and finish the fly off. Okay, then I can snip away my thread. Now what I'm going to do next is just come in with my curved scissors and trim up any erroneous fibres of the deer hair. Bit time consuming this one. And once I'm happy with that, let's have a look, it looks not too bad. I'm going to invert my vise again and just under the thorax area I'm going to use green, but you can use black or another dark colour, brown would work. Just to colour up that thread. And once you're happy with that, while you've got the fly upside down, if you've had to move it in your vise, or you can invert your vise, like I've done, you can just add the tiniest spot a UV resin to secure it all off. And there you've got the finished article. There, there's the there's the footprint. Uh, I can just see the glint of light coming through from the bottom, which is exactly what I wanted. And the partridge has given that impression of small legs from an emerging beastie. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button now. There's new videos twice a week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.